Hello everyone, I'm going to make an Ulderman treasure guide. I will show you the path I take, what makes the loot from Ulderman so sought after, and what you can expect gold wise from it. This is the route I take. The cross are the locations I stop to kill and loot the NPCs I aggro. A change in Legion is that entering through the side entrance puts you to the main entrance, so the farm has gotten a bit of a nerf. If you are a rogue, you might want to take the blue way to get to the chest spawns. They can drop rare loot like recipes. I start with setting my hearthstone to fuse light. I then fly to the side entrance. I will show you a speed it up video of the route. I try to aim for all the bosses at level 40 and I also choose to ignore most NPCs in the earliest stage of the dungeon. The reason I will explain after the run through. I aim to do the dungeon in 6 minutes or less so that I am able to reach the limit of 10 incenses an hour. About 5 minutes is a great time. This route got a lot of mobs, which means a lot of chances for rare loot. Some extra time left over, which is needed for selling items to Vendor, or mail newfound loot to an alt while farming. It will probably go faster as Havoc, but I like the controlled AoE and the Infernal Strike that you have as Vengeance, so that's why I stay like this. Now, why Ulderman is so valuable is firstly because you got many unique looks that are sought after. Uh, for transmog. Uh, items like for example Papal Fess or the Excavator's Brand. Another reason is the rarity of those items. Back before Cataclysm, the levels of the mobs were different from today. They used to be a bit higher. After the levels were reduced, the item that they dropped stayed at the same item level as before. Uh, and an NPC is only able to drop items that are free item level close to their own level. So let's say a Trog at level 39 can maximum drop an item, item of item level 42. After a while, the items did get their item level change to fit with the new levels of the incense mobs. However, the mobs still go on the item's original item level that they had when they determine if it should drop or not. So the change to the item's item level didn't do anything to make them any less rare or unobtainable from certain mobs. The whole Cataclysm level reduction in Ulderman 
led to many items becoming more rare, and some items even believed by some to be unobtainable, like the miner's hat of the deep. Here is a list of the original item level of the items in the instance, the item level that counts when they are determined if they should drop. These are items with the original item level 35 to 39. They are dropped by most mobs in the instance. The lowest item level of these aren't dropped by the highest endgame mobs in Ulderman, however. These are items with the original item level 40 to 42. They are dropped by most mobs as well, uh, but not the lowest of them, like the starter trogs. That's the reason I usually ignore the mobs at the start of the instance. However, if you have some extra time and want every single opportunity for zone, lo zone loot, then you should round them up and kill them. Be aware, however, that their leech range ain't too large. These two items are original item level 43. Because of the change in kata with a lower level Uldaman, they are only obtainable from level 40 mobs, which is most bosses, stone keepers before last boss, and also a chest at the end. A total of 10 drop chances each run. The route I take will make you have every opportunity to get them, since the route goes through all the level 40 NPCs and the chest. The first two bosses are level 39, so they can be ignored. These items are item level 44 to 45. The items are the ones speculated to be unobtainable. However, they can still be obtained. There are proof on Wowhead for most of them dropping through the chest called Ancient Treasure, located at the end of the instance after Archidas. The chest is able to drop zone drops, uh, like the rest of the mobs, and since the chest ain't an NPC, uh, well, its level can't be lowered. So it still drops the original loot from the instance. But since it's one chance each run, and the drop rate is probably about 1 out of 10,000, it takes for most people an average of 10,000 runs to see the specific item you want. For example, the miner's hat of the deep. For some people it might take even longer. Because of this rarity on the items that people want to transmog, the range that you're able to sell the items you get in Ulderman range from a few hundred gold to millions. So if you ever feel like going to the World of Warcraft counterparty lottery, Ulderman is the place you should visit. And even if you weren't to get the rarest of items, there are many less rare items that still can sell for a lot. Some green items in the instance can sell for a few hundred or thousands of gold. There are many rare recipes as well. Some sell for tens of thousands of gold. Most of the greens, however, hold little value, so I vendor those since they are probably not worth trying to sell. I usually get maybe average one or two instance blues each hour I farm. Some of the instance blues really makes it worth the time, for example the shoveler that sells for a lot. However, it takes long to sell most of these transmog items, so if you were to get an item worth of 10k gold in an hour, with the time spent reposting, I would say the gold you make is about 5k an hour. I was personally lucky enough to get the Stone Vault Bonebreaker during my first 40 runs. It took a while, but I ended up selling it for about 60k in Worlds of Draenor, even if there are similar looking items. The rarity of items surely brings up the price considerably. I hope this guide was of any help, and give you a better understanding of the treasures in Ilderman. If there is something I missed, or if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.